This is a video tutorial of how to get started with Computer Repair Simulator. When you launch the game, you're going to be introduced to the Game Launcher. The Game Launcher offers several different options which should be self-explanatory. The first thing I want to talk about is the options. If you click on Options, the most important part of the game is your difficulty level. By default it's set to Medium. If you have it set to Easy, you'll be able to remove and interact with any item without any other dependencies. For example, if you want to remove the case in Easy Mode, you just enable the Build Brick Mode, click the case, and you'll be able to add or remove it. If you select Medium as a difficulty, if you try to remove the case, it's going to tell you you need to remove all the other parts before the case can be modified. What we're going to do is we're going to set this to uh, Medium Mode, and you can save your changes. And then you can get started by pressing the Play button. You can create a new profile or continue with an existing profile. And we're going to use the default options. For now, we're going to start PC Repair Mode. As the software continues to load, you'll be notified of your key mapping on the screen. You can use your WASD keys to move around, your left mouse button to turn or rotate the camera, you can use your right mouse button to close or unselect an item, you can use your middle mouse wheel to scroll up to move the camera up or to scroll down or alternatively you can use the page up and page down to move your camera up and down in the viewport. You'll see that the game's about to load. Once the game's loaded, we can use our WASD keys to move around. You'll be informed of some of the scenario information by a banner, some information at the bottom right in your event window, and by a welcome screen for the scenario, which is here. We can close this for now, and now you can use your WASD keys to move around. If you need to move faster, hold in the left shift as you use the WASD keys. If you need to rotate your view, you can hold the left mouse button and move around to look at different areas. We're going to move over to the computer case for now. You'll see that there's a few help icons showing up here that help us get started with the, with the software. The first thing we want to do is we want to state that there's one issue with the, with the hardware. If we come down here, it says that no power at all and can you smell that burning plastic? So that's a little hint. When we get started, we can't really do anything with the computer right now. We need to first enable the activate mode, which is the hand icon. When you left click, you activate build break mode, and when you right click it, you disable it. For now, we need to enable it by left clicking, and now we can interact with the hardware. If we try to remove the side panel, You'll see at the bottom right that it says, this item is secured by another, keep looking. Well, if we keep looking, we'll notice that there's two screws right here. If we click on these screws, we can remove them. Once removed, we can now remove the side panel. As a little trick, since most of us will be working inside the desktop computer, I always like to put a screw back into the side case. When I do this, the dependencies will kick in and the side panel can't be installed because the screw's installed first. Now I have a clear image of what's going on. Alternatively, I can hold the left shift button in, and when I hold the left shift button in, you can see that the invisible items are no longer kind of invisible, like they're hidden completely. If I release the left shift key, you'll see that they come back. If I want to reinstall a component, I just click on the ghost light icon, and it'll bring me to a window where I can select the parts. I can now select the part and reinstall the component. As I'm working with this system, you'll see that there's three problems now. We started off with one, but now we have three. The reason for this is because there's certain parts that aren't installed. If we install this screw again, we now have two problems. If we install this screw, we now have one problem. If you get stuck and you can't figure out where the problem's at, you can use the brain icon on the left. When you use the brain icon on the left, you can see that it will make anything red that has a failure. Currently, we can see the power supply has a problem. In order to remove the power supply, we're probably going to need some tools. If you notice, you'll see that there's some screws that hold it in. And if I try to remove them right now, it's going to say you need to use the correct tools. So to get started, I need to go to the shop. And I need to go to tools and graphics. Uh, actually, it should be tools and gadgets and I need to find a Phillips head screwdriver. So I'm gonna buy a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna move my mouse out of the window and right click to close the window. 
Now go to my inventory, click on my tool. I'm going to activate this and put it into my tool belt. When I activate it, you'll see it shows up in your tool belt. If you need to remove an item, simply right click on the icon. But for now, I need to activate it. Again, to close the window, I can just move the mouse outside of the window and hold the right click. Now I can activate my Phillips head and I can remove these screws. I'm going to right click to deactivate my tool and now I'm going to try to remove the power supply. It says this item is secured by another, keep looking. As you notice, as I'm working, my ESD is building up. This is not safe for certain hardware. There's two ways to fix this. The first way is to go to your Android companion, who should be floating around the room somewhere. There he is. You can right click on him and remove ESD. The second option to remove ESD is to go to your shop under tools again, go to the next page and you'll see that there's an ESD wrist strap. You can buy this and just like any other tool, you can go to your inventory click on it and activate it. You'll see that we don't have enough inventory icons down here in our tool belt. So we need to right click on the existing icon and activate this and the ESD levels will begin to lower. If you want more tool belt icons, you need to continue working on fixing computers and building computers. Every time you gain skill points, you can start the level up and you can unlock parts of the game to make gameplay easier. For now, we're gonna remove this and we're going to figure out how to remove the power supply. So again, to close this window, move your mouse outside and right click. Hold in the right click to do that. And now I need to remove the power supply. You'll see that inside it's a little difficult with the side panel. So I'm going to remove the case screws again, remove the panel. I'm going to put the screw back in so I can work inside the computer. Deactivate the build brake mode so I don't accidentally click on anything. And I can see that the power supply is currently connected to my hard drives, my CD drive, and my main board, and my CPU up here. So I need to disconnect them. Activate your build brake icon. You'll see that there's a tab. Disconnect this. Disconnect that. I'm going to right click to close my active because I don't want to click on anything accidentally. And I'm going to remove power here, here, and here. Now I should be able to remove the power supply, which I was able to. Now that the power supply is removed, I need to go to my inventory. You'll see that the power supply is at 94% health, but it's not good enough for the computer. So I'm going to click on it, repair it, hold in right click outside the window, and I'm going to reinstall it. So I'm going to click on the power supply icon. I've installed the power supply. I now need to connect all the cables back up. Okay, so all of my cables are connected. Now I need to install the screws. And in order to do that, I need to use the correct tool as noted at the bottom right in the event window. So I'm gonna to go to my inventory, activate my Phillips, hold right click to close the window, left click to activate, and now I can install these screws. You'll see that I can't install the big screw, it's not compatible, but the small screw is compatible, so I'm going to do that. So click on all the screws to reinstall them. I'm using my mouse wheel to go up and down. Once all of the screws are installed, you'll see that there's two problems left. More than likely it's the side panel and the screw. So to finish the job, I am going to remove this screw, put the side panel back in, put the screw here in, put the second screw in, and you'll now see that I have no more problems and I can send the invoice and complete the job. If you want to boot the system, you can click the boot system now. When you do that, you'll see that the computer does turn on. You don't have to watch this, you can click the close button. And now you can finish the job by pressing the send invoice. Now that you've sent the invoice, you've earned some money, you've earned some XP, and now you can use that money and XP for your next gameplay. The XP as it builds can unlock different skills. In the skill window will show you what options you have available. If 
we want to close any window, move your mouse outside of the window and hold the right click. You'll now see that we have our second scenario with a completely set of different problems. Whenever you want to quit the software, you can hold in the escape key. So as you hold the escape key in, you're going to get a prompt that asks you, do you want to quit the game? If you select no, it will just cancel. If you select yes, the game will close.